Hello everyone! In this video we want to show you how we can do a sublimation of a compound. Uh, here we have a biphenyl acetylene. The structure is over here. Um, we think that this compound should be colorless. Uh, so there's at least one yellow impurity in here. And for sublimation we will use this Schlenk flask. And over here we have a, a cool finger. This is not the perfect setup if you choose a sublimation setup for yourself. You should check that the cool finger is significantly slimmer than the uh, connector here because when you draw out the cool finger, you don't want all the crystals to fall off in the socket. Uh, that is also the reason why I put some Teflon tape here because if you have grease here, your crystals might stick to this uh, grease later. We did a uh, column chromatography of this compound earlier, but uh, didn't clean it perfectly. That's why we are choosing the sublimation. Um, what we like to do instead of having a setup like this, where eventually the uh, particles down there get so small that the vapor pressure of the compound will lift them up, we like to put in a piece of filter paper this will just prevent uh, dirty uh, parts of the material to fly up. And ideally, this just sits on top of the whole thing. A little bit wind on top, but it should be okay. It should just, in general, cover the area that faces the uh, sublimation cooling thing. We gently evacuate this whole chamber. It might be that even if you had your compound on the vacuum line for a long time, that there might still be solvents in the compound. So never start with a hot oil bath as everything might start to spray up. Also in this setup, we don't have a pressure meter. So we don't actually know what our uh, vacuum is like. So instead of uh, estimating from a similar known compound to what temperature we have to go, uh, instead we should gently heat up the whole system and wait for the first crystals to appear on the cooling finger. I'm turning on the water for the cooling here. And monitor the temperature. Yeah, so we are back. Uh, we heated up the setup very gently and we're now at 90 degrees centigrade. And we can also see that the tip of the cooling finger looks a bit more cloudy. This is the first little bit of product that has sublimed over. And when we look uh, down in, in the bottom, it looks like our material actually looks like it's liquefying and boiling. Um, this is then not a true sublimation, but it could be almost understood as a distillation. It could be that because the material is dirty, that the melting point is uh, lowered. Nevertheless, uh, we will get a clean product like this. So, welcome back again. Uh, we are almost done here. I had to increase the temperature to about 150 degrees. The bubbles that we saw earlier must have been trapped with solvent. Uh, we can see some of the crystals have grown on the wall, actually, of the uh, flask. But uh, most of it has sublimed in the middle. And uh, we, we put 
there. Uh, yeah, we can see a little bit through there. The cool thing uh, has a thick crust of crystals uh, sublime to it. Uh, I will run it a few more hours to get a few last bit. Hello and welcome back. It is now much later. The whole apparatus has cooled down. Uh, during the whole sublimation process, the Cielo impurity actually uh, decomposed and got really black. Uh, I think you can see better when I open it in a minute. Uh, unfortunately, the, the shell of sublimed material that was on the cooling finger while the apparatus was cooling down broke off and fell down. Uh, and I could have just resublimed it up, but I thought I'd leave it like this as a cautionary tale for you. Uh, and we'll try to get the material out anyway. And uh, yeah, this also shows you how important it can be to have this filter paper there that it catches the material before it falls into the dirty residue. So first thing you want to uh, do when opening this, all these crystals are very fragile and we don't want the uh, air to rush in too quickly. So right now the system is closed. Uh, it should be still under vacuum, but uh, it could be that this is not perfectly tight and already air has come in very slowly. I'll just open this uh, tab carefully. can feel a resistance, so this is already pressurized. Make some room here. paper down to catch anything that falls to the side and then later I have a little vial prepared here and we'll try to get it all in there. So first thing is I, I like to put it to the side a little bit so that the stuff doesn't fall back to the ground and now carefully I remove cooling finger. Yeah, and you can see, sadly, most has fallen off, uh, so we'll take care about that in a minute. Let's see if I can lay it down there. I don't know if it doesn't want to lay there. Luckily, we always have some extra hands in the humor. crystals some may remain in the flask we can easily resublime it now let's try to get it into the glass vial <coughs> sometimes to convince crystals to go where you want them to and eventually something drops to the side that's not too bad that's why I had put uh, some paper down I can easily retrieve that the freshly sublimed product. We'll do some NMR and check for 
purity. When you do this, try to note down at what temperature and what uh, pressure you sublimed the material and you can use that for your characterization. Yeah, so finally this is more of the, the normal situation where you have material on your cooling finger. One thing that you can do is just scrape it off with a spatula. Often doesn't look like much, but when you're done you have some significant amount. And normally there's a huge crust at the bottom. What you can also do is just hold it over a beaker or a round bottom flask and rinse it down with your solvent of choice and then roll a everything together.